Here I have the Precision Matthews PM833T. I've done a number of upgrades. I've got a VFD. I'm actually going to change that VFD. Um, I run a three horsepower motor on here. And uh, as you can see, the gearbox has actually been holding up pretty well. Um, there is some wear, but for the most part, uh, it's, it's held up well with a three horsepower. Uh, this one's a 3600, uh, it's a Tech Top 3600 RPM motor. I had this one custom balanced. Uh, you can see the specs if you ever want to get one from these guys. The motor connection on eBay has them. And uh, they turn the shaft down to 19 millimeter, as you can see here, and then they rekeyed it and then they balance it, put better bearings in it. I think it was about $550, $600, somewhere around in there. And it's been a great motor. I've got power feeds uh, all the way around here, as you can see. My table's extended, so I actually had to mill the top of the power feed, so I just used a piece of camouflage duct tape just to keep the stuff from getting in, down into the into the gear here. And then uh, added a, a way cover. Here's the power feed. And it's easy, I know you can buy these kits, but it's ridiculous. I only paid $125 for the power feed. And then I had some scrap, uh, uh, probably 17.4 or something like that, uh, or 304 stainless, something like that. And I just uh, made an extension shaft for it and it worked really well. Um, didn't have to replace the entire shaft. And it works just fine the way it is. And then uh, for this side here, I took some photo aluminum and machined and this is actually groove so I can just loosen that up it slides in there there is a groove just like you would normally have here in the front of t-slot here I don't have a t-slot didn't really need it so I just put a few adjustment bolts uh, in there for all that I would need and then there is no adjustment between here because you never need to use that anyways not on none on the y-axis the main thing is is I probably won't ever adjust these I just don't want it crashing, so uh, if I walk away, I want to make sure it stops before and, and doesn't keep trying to drive through. Uh, I run the, the Char 690V vise. It's a large uh, six by nine vise, and then I put oversized uh, uh, jaws in there quite often. I've got I've got many different jaws: regular size, oversized, tall, short. Pretty much anything you can think of. Um, it's been a good vice. Uh, the bed on it uh, has worn from use, but uh, I don't set anything on there normally, so uh, it still seems to clamp okay. Uh, is it any better than buying a $150 vice? I mean, if you need it to open nine inches, yeah, buy one. If, if you don't need that extra three inches, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother. Besides the fact you can always, if you need more room on a on a six inch vise, you can just put your your jaw on this back side here, so that works fine too. So I decided to, I had the VFD control sitting on the side over here. It was in a custom aluminum box bolted on the side. I decided since I had the face off, since I'm replacing spindle bearings, that I put it in here. Uh, there's enough room in here, so I'm just gonna run the wire up through and over and uh, call it a day. Um, I never use low gear on here. I've never needed to, so it's always left in high. Uh, on here, uh, I use one and two. I never use three. Um, with the VFD, if you drop it down on two, you can drop it down to 50 RPM if you want. And a one, you can crank it all the way up to 8,000 RPM. Um, you're pretty close, about 7,200, I think, is what I was getting out of it. Anyways, the tapered roller bearings uh, burnt out, uh, uh, fried out after a year and a half here, finally. So I was surprised it took longer, um, but they finally went out. So I put angular contacts in and I put the 7, uh, 7207 BMU and the 7206 BMU is in here. Now they're 40 degree and they're about $80 a set. And to put them in the PM833T, you have to machine the spindle a little bit, so you're gonna need a lathe. Um, I, I've got a large lathe, so I uh, set it across and I took 48 thousandths more off of the upper, uh, off the upper bearing uh, uh, seat on there where the race is, so the bearing could 
drop down because I wasn't able to get any preload on it from the factory. These are set. So they use the factory bearings and the preload is, is what it is. So unless you're running factory bearings all the time, you, you can't adjust it. You just tighten it and done. So now it's adjustable. I took that extra 40,000 steps off of it. The bearing uh, set down. It's really nice. It feels good. Uh, can't wait to break it in here shortly. So these are some of the upgrades. Uh, Home Depot lighting, just LED light. Cheap, uh, I think they're $30 or so. You can simply just mount right to the side there. And it, it tends to give you plenty of light. Plus I've got an overhead light as well. And uh, this I am converting to CNC. I know the screen looks awful, but it's got a plastic cover over the top. Um, so I will be uh, converting this over to CNC. I've got everything for it. Servos, 750 watt servos, and a 1.8 kilowatt for the, um, for the uh, Z axis. And then I've got a 40 millimeter ball screw for the Z axis and 25 millimeters for the X and the Y. Um, and I'm going with two pits. So it's gonna be a fairly fast moving. Uh, I'll be filling the whole bottom end here with epoxy granite and uh, the column has epoxy granite in it so it's uh, pretty solid and I'm going to make a belt drive next for this after I get this back together because I need to use this machine for a few of the parts I'm going to make. So I'm going to make a belt drive and I'm going to obsolete the gearbox on here and I'll probably fill the head with epoxy granite probably up to about right here so it'll be permanently, it'll give me more rigidity, less vibrational chatter through here and be done. I took a measurement, uh, looks like I could put a three and a half inch uh, um, ISO 30 uh, uh, spindle in here. So there are some Chinese models out there. Um, I would have to bore this out a little bit, but I could bore it out safely to th like 3.6 inches uh, and still have enough casting in there to, to mount it and support it, which is fine. You don't need a lot, you know, just a thin wall in there. Um, would be good. So I'm probably going to change that over as well uh, as I do this belt drive. So I've got a few steps to do. I'm busy. I work with it all the time too. And I've got three other mills that I've got in here too, along with a lathe and a router and a 3D printer. So these are uh, all projects uh, going on and uh, hope to uh, do some updates. But I wanted to run by uh, what I've done, give you guys some ideas, what you can do, I and mean, you can do it all from home. If you've got a lathe, that's pretty much the main thing. Um, you can do all these upgrades. So basically, uh, if you were to imagine, here actually I've got a spindle over here. I can, this race here, I'll show you. This one's a little bit longer spindle. But uh, as you can see, where the bearing rides on here, there's still plenty of room to get preload. You can see there's still a half inch on this one. Well, on the PM833T, it stops. There is no room to add any preload for angular contact. So all I did was machine 40, what is it, 46 or 47 thousandths, whatever I went uh, uh, beyond that. Um, no, I don't even remember, but it was somewhere around there. Um, just that little bit difference was enough to uh, thread it and get the proper preload on it. So pretty excited. It was super easy to do. Um, not difficult at all. And um, even on there, uh, on, the, on the bottom ridge, if you feel on most spindles, it's a, it's a little bit more shallow. So they, they cut them a little bit deeper so you can get, if the bearing were to rest against there, you'd get a, a tight solid square fit so I went down oh probably about five thousandths lower than the actual race and it was really uh, uh, minimal no effect on the bearing because the bearing probably doesn't even seat over to the edge it just needed that extra little bit so I could tighten the preload on it so yeah it was something a little bit mind-bending that uh, you know you wonder uh, why is this not tightening? Did I get a bad set of bearings? And no, I didn't. I bought them from an eBay seller. And uh, here are the part numbers. Here's that one. And from what I hear, the uh, other guys like I'm Practical Machinist and, and, and HobbyMachinist.com have uh, been running these bearings and getting about two thousandths of run out. So uh, I'll be happy if I get two thousandths run out. That's spectacular. Um, Heck, even when I had uh, about 8,000s run out from bad bearings, it was still machining fine. So 
uh, you know, you're running those high speeds, it tends to kind of uh, bring itself into a place. So if I get 2,000 sets, excellent. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'd be more than willing to help, and this will be the first of uh, many series to come. And uh, hopefully, I'll you know show you guys how to make stuff like this here in the future. And as well as uh, I made a vice guide, another thing that I made recently, and I, I didn't get quite finished in the last process uh, because uh, the spindle bearing locked up and seized. So uh, this is a guide. Obviously, it goes on the back side of the vise, and you can put a couple of half inch by 13 in there, and you can adjust this and you get that stop. And uh, it's got an end stop that goes on, and I set it up so it's perfectly 90 degrees square, so I can square up anything I want in there. It looks like, I mean, I'm even long enough if I've got a small item, I could just quickly run it off the back. What happened is I was starting to slot it and uh, spindle died on me while I was slotting so I never got finished and this will be so I can put different uh, parts and adapt different parts to it um, in case I want to uh, uh, mount something at a particular angle I'll be able to put that particular wedge and mount it up there and you know guide it and set it where I want it um, I do a lot of fixturing like that where I you know spec you know, specifically have a process I need to do repeatedly and um, so that'll help uh, help alleviate uh, that and make it a lot easier and faster uh, especially when you're manual machining so i hope that helps thanks guys for watching and uh, if you have a pm833t and want to tell me about issues you have had with it uh, i'd be more than happy to uh, help you out with those